Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna go over the do's and don'ts of using your colorless blender marker. If you ever bought a set of alcohol markers, you probably have a colorless blender marker. And they generally will have a chisel on one end and they may have a brush or a bullet tip on the other end. Now, I find the chisel nib to be the most useful tip on a colorless blender marker. So if you've got like a Spectrum Noir Illustrator where you've got a bullet and a brush, you might also wanna pick up one that's got a chisel nib. Most markers do have a chisel nib on them. So when I first got my colorless blender marker, it was when I first started with markers and that was probably about 12 years ago and I didn't have a lot of markers. So I thought, hey, I know, I'll get this colorless blender and then I can blend my two markers together really easily. So what I would do was I would get my, my marker out and I would color like half of it with, um, with one color say I wanna go orange to yellow, and then I would color the other half of that with the, and of course, back then, these were chisel markers, they weren't the brush tip ones, and I would overlap them, and then I would say, ah, I'm gonna get my colorless blender marker, oh, and you know, gotta protect your work surface, and then I'm just gonna color over where they meet, and they're gonna blend, and I'm gonna have the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, it's gonna look like all of that beautiful art, marker art that I've seen, and look, they're just, what, what's going on? These aren't blending. What's, how come these aren't blending? This is, this is supposed to be a blender marker. It's not blending at all. So I realized, well, that's not the best way to use this marker. And I kind of thought the marker was useless and I never really used it that much for a while. But then I learned how to use it properly and that's what I'm gonna teach you today. So let's say you're, be you're a beginner and you don't have a lot of markers and you want to blend a yellow to an orange like that. Well, one thing you can do is you can take that colorless blender marker and you can use a technique called priming. And that's when you go over the entire area that you want to color and you per first put in your clear marker. Now you can hold it up to the light. I can't really show that on camera, but if you hold it up to the light and you see that it's translucent, you know you've saturated the paper. And then what you can do is you could go in with your lightest color and you probably actually want to fill the entire area in. And that's because we're taking a big jump here and we need to kind of nudge those colors together. And then you could go in with your darker color. You wanna work quickly while everything's still wet. Then you wanna go in with your lighter color again work over where those colors meet. Now this isn't gonna be perfect because this is a really big jump in color. And you just keep working those colors back and forth until you get somewhat of a blend. I'll go back in with the darker color. Now you really wanna make sure you have something to protect your work surface underneath because you are really gonna be saturating. Now look at the edges of this, um, this square that I'm doing it is starting to flood the area. So when you're gonna do this technique and you're really gonna saturate your paper, you need to make sure that you, you stay within the lines a little bit. So when you're first priming that, I would definitely keep within the lines maybe a 16th of an inch and just be careful as you add color. So this is still, um, this is still really wet, so it's not gonna show the proper colors yet, but then you can, you will be able to see that you get much more of a transition here, a much more smooth transition here than you got there. Okay, and here are some, some dry examples. This is those two colors trying to blend together using the first method, which is what we probably all tried when we first got our colorless blender, and this is when we prime it first, okay? So it's just a much easier way to do it. Now, let's say you decide to start off again, like uh, coloring, you know, you colored half of it with the yellow. We're going the other direction this time, why not? <laughs> You colored half of it with the yellow, then you did the other half with the orange, and then you're like, oh no, I forgot, that doesn't work, what can I do? Okay, so rather than just blending where they meet, you wanna color the entire area. That's gonna help smooth things out and not get that bleached out effect in the center. You are still gonna lighten everything and get a bleached out effect, but it's gonna be a lot more, um, it's gonna, you're not gonna have that big center in the, se that big section in the center. And then I would work over it with your lighter color again to try to soften that. Now that's kind of only a, that's a Band-Aid. That's like, whoops, I made a mistake. I've already colored it. I don't wanna throw away my whole picture. Um, how can I, how can I fix it? Then you can work back in. So it's kind of like you're priming afterwards and then you're working your colors over again until you get them to, uh, to meld, okay? So that's just another way you can do it. It's a little bit 
softer um, than the don't here and there's an example of it with those colors it just gives you a better transition it's not as nice as priming um, but it will get you there and that's when you have those colors that are just really different different than each other and they don't want to blend because that's a really big jump generally if you were going to blend colors this is the ohuhu set of um set of 120 colors. So if I wanted to blend yellows, what I would do, say I wanted to go from that color to that color, I would find something in between those two colors and maybe even a couple colors that are in between so I could go from that to that to that. It would be a lot smoother because each color doesn't have to jump so far. Or if I was doing blue, I'd probably, um, like those two colors are pretty far apart, I'd try to find something in between those. But if I don't, then I could color it all with that color, add in that color, and then kind of work them back and forth but if I primed it with the clear blender first it would just go together a little bit easier okay uh, same thing with the green so that's why it is helpful to have a large selection but you certainly don't have to do that so here's another way you can do that with our wonderful clear blending marker so let's say you want to do a gradation and you're just you don't have that many colors you're a beginner maybe you started off by buying a pack of sharpies and you know you bought a sharpie and you bought a clear blender marker maybe you picked up a few pastel markers open stock at the craft store um i'm going to show you two different ways to use a technique called palette blending so the first way would be um maybe i color the whole thing in with my yellow i want to blend these two colors they're really far apart we're going to stick with these two colors because we know you know, that way you can see how each technique looks a little differently. Okay, so you color that with the yellow. Then, there's two things you can do. With the blender, you can pick up this color, and I would use a brush tip if you have it. So you pick up that orange. Now don't worry, you can scribble your marker off later to remove that color. And then what you can do is you can work over this, kind of back and forth, and as you use up the ink that's on the tip of your marker, you're going to get a soft blend. Okay? Now this is really handy if, say, you have, um, you've invested in like a Copic colorless blender, so it's got a nice brush tip on it, but all of your other markers are, are like Sharpies or Big Markets, so you don't have a, um, uh, so you don't have a brush tip. So that way you can have that one marker with the brush tip that could make your other markers behave a little bit more like brush tips. So then before you cap it off and put it away, you scribble that marker on your scrap paper. So another thing you can do, I'm just going to show you this, even though it's not a colorless blender trick, is that if you've got two colors you want to blend, you can, again, scribble your darker color onto a dish or a piece of plastic, whatever you have. Then you can take your um, lighter tone and you can pick it up with the tip of that marker, and don't worry, it's not going to ruin it. And then you can again, you can do this all kind of in one go. Now I recommend you finish, well be a little careful, you don't want to go out the edges like I did, but although I'll show you how to clean them up in a minute. Whenever you start with more color, you want to start it at that end. So that's if you have a set of markers, maybe you don't have the color of the splendor and you want to do that, that same trick. Okay, so it's just another fun way to use your supplies. So that's called palette blending. Okay, now another thing you can do with the clear blender is you can blend a color to white. And to do that, that's best used with a pale color, but you can use it with, um, with a darker color. For one way, one way to do that, let's say you wanna blend this, look how dark that blue is. That's gonna be difficult to blend if you colored it right to your paper. But you can take, what I would do actually is I would pre-prime this area if it's large. Don't, you don't have to do that if it's small, but if it's large, you pre-prime this area. Then you're going to pick up the color with your marker. And then you're going to start here on the darker edge. You might have to load up a lot more in your marker. And you are just going to work back and forth and it's going to get lighter as you go until it's finally blended out to white. Now starting with a dark color like that, the only downside is that you can get kind of like a speckly effect to it because you've got a lot of alcohol in there and you've got a lot of really dark ink that's not dispersed. So that's the only downside, but you definitely could use this to, um, to get some really nice shading done. Now, if you had a mid-tone, then you could obviously color it all with that lighter color and then do this over it like we did there. But, you know, if you've got a pack of Sharpies and you've got a clear blender, you might not have those mid-tones. And I want you to be able to, um, to kind of do what you want to do. Um, 
So yes, that is blending to white. Now, if you're just working in a small area, let's say you're coloring in, um, oh, maybe, well, if I draw something, it'll, I'll just, I'll just do it over here and you can see. If you're just doing a small area, you don't need to pre-prime it because chances are you'll have enough color on the tip of that marker that you can just do it in one go. And also a small area, you probably don't want to pre-prime, I mean, color everything with a clear blender first because um, you could, push the ink out of the edges and end up having some area to clean up. So another do and don't of using an alcohol marker is using a technique called erasing. So let's say you're, uh, you're coloring and whoops, you made some mistakes and you got your ink outside of the lines. Very, very sloppy. Now, of course, you'd be spending, you'd be spending more time and you'd be coloring neater than that. So one thing you can do with your marker is you can use it to erase. And I recommend the chisel edge for this. And what you do is you go up to the edge, you go over the area you want to lighten and you color over it. And what that does is it pushes the ink back into the lines. It also can push it through the paper. So you wanna make sure you have a, a paper underneath to catch any of that ink. If you were doing this on like a, a plastic sheet and you've been coloring a bunch of other things and there was ink on that sheet, it would reconstitute it and pull it up through that paper and make a mess. Now this doesn't look that great. It actually looks kind of stained. I don't know if you can see it there, if you can see that staining, but there, there's quite a bit of staining in there. What you want to do if you make a mistake is you want to let that ink dry. If you let the ink dry, then you can color over it and erase it much better. You can, without a stain. It's, um, I don't know why letting it dry helps, but it definitely does help you get a much cleaner look. It's going to be hard to see until this is dry, but I do have a dry example that I can show you. So you basically just firmly color over that with your chisel nib. You probably could use the brush nib, but I feel like it would give unnecessary wear and tear. And it's more about just kind of flooding that ink in there and pushing it through the paper or back within the lines. I think it pushes it through the paper onto a scrap underneath. That's where I think it goes, but sometimes it can be like, where'd that go? It just completely bleached out. <laughs> where, where did that go, right? And you might have to do it a couple of times until you get all of that stain removed. And the chisel edge, the nice thing about that too is you're not gonna flood too much ink. The brush tip sometimes can put out too much ink and then you end up with, um, with like, a, like a, a blossom within your ink. So I'll show you the dry version here. So this one was where the ink was wet. Can you see that staining in there? And this here was where the ink was dry. I did get a little bit of a, of a blossoming in there. I did there too, but since that ink was still wet, it really just kind of worked in and, and smoothed out. But I did get a little bit of a blossom there where the ink was dry here and then I pushed the wet ink into it. So just be careful not to overdo your ink. So the next fun thing that you can do is add textures onto something you've already colored. So let's say you, um, you colored a girl and she had a dress on and you wanted to make that dress plaid or maybe it was a, somebody's shirt or something. So all you have to do is simply draw those lines right over the area that you colored. Now you do want to be careful not to push the ink outside of the area, which you see, can you see that little ghosting there? I was just kind of going beyond the, um, well I can even drag the ink out, see? You want to be careful not to do that, but you can go in and clean it up when it's dry, like what I showed you there. So, um, so you can do stripes, you can do checkers or plaids, and I like the, the uh, chisel nib for this. I feel like I have a lot more control using the chisel nib. And it's easier to get a straight line that's uniform. Okay, and that works best on your dry ink. Okay, so it kind of acts like an eraser or a bleach pen. Think of it like a bleach pen. Now another thing that's fun is say you're drawing like a, uh, a fish or a reptile, something with scales. You can go in and you can dab with a brush tip or with a chisel tip. But you do, the nice thing about the brush tip is it does deposit a little bit more ink. You can go and you can add dots and they will bleach out and you might need to go over it a couple times. And you can experiment with how like long you wanna let your paper dry before you do this. I find that um, you can do this when it's still wet. It will just give you a little softer look. And if you're doing um, like flicks to make fur, if you do it when the ink is wet, you'll get a much softer, fluffier look. And if you wait till it's dry, you'll get more like strands of fur. And I have a wet and dry example I can show you in just a second. 
So you do generally need to kind of, if you want a good contrast, go over those dots a few times. But it is kind of a neat effect. And you can cluster them closer together so you get more of a scaly appearance. I just wanted to make sure they would show up for you in the video. So it'll get more apparent as it dries. Again, sc uh, scribble off your pen. So this one was done on dry ink here, and that was done on wet ink. Okay, so the next example I want to show you is making um, like three-dimensional looks, making kind of like a ball. And I need to grab three different colors for that. Let's do, I'll do Y6, YR2, and actually, let's see, what did I do? I think I did actually Y3. Um, Y33, and um, oh, I think I did YR5, or maybe I did the brown. Which one did I do? BR2. I'll have to go do YR5. That's a nice color. It's different. Okay, so if you want to get the ball, a ball that looks kind of smooth, like a kind of like a brushed metal look, I recommend that you use your colorless blender. And you um, you color in the area first, okay? Then I would go over just about the entire thing with the Y3. That's our that's our lightest color. But when you do this, you don't want to go right up to the edge. Leave about an eighth of an inch gap, okay? Then you're going to take your darkest color, and it could be whatever color you're doing. And I'm just going to add that around the edges pretty carefully so I don't flood it and go outside of the lines. And my highlight's going to be right about here, so I want a little bit more shading down here. Then I'm going to take my, um, what did I do with that medium color? It was... Y33, I think. What did I do with that? Seriously? I just lost my... Oh, I never took it out. <laughs> Y33. I'm going to overlap the, uh, the darker color and bring it in to the lighter area. I'm not going quite to the edge, but I am overlapping a lot of that to get a nice transition. Now I'm going to go back in with my lightest yellow right here. i got to keep my colors separate because... Otherwise, I'm going to get confused. <laughs> and then I'm going to go in with my colorless blender and bring that highlight out while it's still wet. You could use either the chisel or the brush end. Now, see how it's kind of really bleaching that out? Okay, it's getting quite light. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to go in with that, just right around the edges of that, with that lighter yellow, the lightest yellow. And now I'm just going to kind of work back. I'm going to work back to my medium yellow. Now this is really wet. If I was to hold my paper up to the light, I would see it's like translucent, okay? And that's what you need to get this nice soft transition. And any place you see a hard edge, you want to just go back, you want to go back in and blend it. I think that's pretty good. I don't think I need to do any more than that. So when that dries, I'm going to have a really nice, soft, smooth look. Now let's say I want a shiny look. So this is about what that's going to look like when it's dry. Say if I want a shiny look, I'm going to do something a little bit differently. I'm not going to use a colorless blender until the end, until it's dry. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, I can start with the lightest color and color all over it if I want to. Maybe I'm working on paper that doesn't blend very well, or maybe I'm just uh, new and I need a little extra time to work. So I can color most of it with a lighter tone. So again, I'm priming this time, I'm priming. Instead of a clear blender, I'm priming with my lighter color. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to go right in my dark because I don't want to oversaturate. I don't want this to bleed out, so I'm just going to go into my dark color. By the way, I'm working on Nina Classic Crest Solar White Super Smooth Cardstock. I find that to be the best for alcohol marker blending. I'll link it down below along with this set of markers that I'm using. Now I'm going to go with my medium color. I'm going to color over the brown, the browner color. I'm going to just kind of 
make sure I keep those edges wet. Make sure I've got a nice transition. Also, when you're coloring over the darker color, helps because um, if your colors aren't a perfect match, not the same color family, it'll um, they'll mix together and then you'll have uh, a much nicer look. Now I can push this back too. I can go over any of those colors with my lightest and make it a little bit more blendy. Now that's a little too light. I feel like I want to go, go in and darken it a bit. Now you can almost see the ink puddle there because the paper is so wet. So if your paper looks like that, just make sure that you're not going to flood it outside of the lines. But if you do, you can use the eraser trick. Which I don't think I left that one dry long enough because it's still stained a little bit. But we can go over that and, and uh, lighten that up a little bit too. So my lighter one. Now I need to make sure I let that dry before I do anything else for highlighting or the effect isn't going to work. But while I'm waiting, I can go back to my uh, first example here and I can bleach out some more of those stains. Now clearly you wouldn't want to be this sloppy when you're coloring, but I just did that to kind of just illustrate how you can erase your mistakes. Now I can see that lightening up quite a bit on the second pass through. And also I like to use a chisel tip whenever I don't need that brush tip whenever possible because it just lengthens the life of my brush marker because you will start to wear down the tip. The only Copic nib I ever had to replace has been on the clear, my clear blending marker. I could go in here, I could go in and lighten up the areas that um, bled out of here. I could do that here as well. You know, of course, it'll save you a lot of time if you're not sloppy to begin with, but that's really going to help you, um, that's really going to help you with your with your blending and your cleaning up and getting a good look. Now you can see how much lighter that is. I mean, it's still it's still translucent, so it's not showing the complete bleach out effect, but uh, as it dries, it will. So another thing I want to show you, because we do need to let that dry. We're still letting that dry. If I hold it to the light, it's still transparent, it's still translucent, so I know it's not dry. So another technique I want to show you, it's, a, it's the blend out to white technique, but it's when you have a few more colors. So let's look at our color chart here. Let's say I want to make something really soft. I want to make something that's um, that's like a marshmallow or something. I want it to go from that color to white. So I could take that color, PB7. I could take that color, BG4. And this is why you swatch your colors out because you can't always go by what the numbers on your and what the letters on your marker say. If you have an actual swatch, you can look at that and say, yep, those two will go good together. They look pretty good to me. Um, so. If you want to blend out to white, we'll do this on, uh, we can do this right here. I recommend that you start off by coloring the entire thing with your clear blender. Or at least half of it. You don't even have to do the, like, where it's going to be real dark, but at least color mid-range to highlight area with your clear blender. Now I can look and see that it's translucent. I wish I had some way I could show you that, but trust me, you can kind of see through it. Then I would go in with my darkest area. So this is the darkest anything's going to be. This technique is really popular with card makers, like coloring like cute little animals and things like that. I see it a lot. And I can go in with my medium color. I'm gonna color over all of that blue. And I'm gonna bring that up. And look, it just automatically kind of wants to go to white. Now, if I color this color on its own, it's quite a bit darker than what it's showing up there because of the clear ink that we've already applied. And then I can hit the transition area. Now, that's a little harsh. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is go back to my darker color. I'm going to go over my darker area. Not right to the edge because I don't want to get that blooming. I don't want it to spill out of the edge and over, like, feather out. I was a little sloppy there. But I'm going to hit the edges again. The key to a lot of smooth coloring is a lot of um, just working your color back and forth until you get the look that you like. Applying a little less ink this time, just trying to smooth it out. Going in with that medium color, just overlapping a bit. If your ink is all wet, you don't have to keep working over the entire thing, especially if you've got a cardstock that really likes to blend like this Nina cardstock does. And I'm sure there's other brands out there that work really good. I just, this is, I think, the most affordable uh, stuff that I've come across. 
and there we go. It's not dry, so it's not going to look perfectly smooth yet, but there you can see the idea. So what I'm going to do now is hold this to the light and look and see if that is dry yet. I think it's pretty well dry. It might not be 100%. Give it a little more time at home, but um, I want to show you this technique and not have the video super duper long. I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take the chisel edge and on my highlight area, I am going to firmly color in a circle. And that's going to give me a hard edged highlight. See that? And the reason we're getting that hard edge, that ink is getting pushed to the outside of my um, of my shape here that I'm making. Now it might be easier to get a circle with a brush tip, so go ahead and use a brush tip if you want to. You don't really have to press hard. You just need to you just need to get that ink in there. Now I'm going to put a re uh, like a reflection over here, so I'm just going to go back and forth in a kind of crescent motion. And that's just bleaching that area out there. I can put a couple little circles over here for highlight or even a line if I want to. But I think the, the, the main reason to use the chisel edge is when you want to have the accuracy like to clean up a mistake or and you want to save wear and tear. When you're blending out to white, the brush nib really does help. But it's not, I mean, you don't have to have that. If you have a store that only sells like classic Prismacolor markers and you just want to pick up a couple markers here and there, that will definitely do the trick. And there you can see, I'll show you the dry version just so you can kind of see, you get a much more shinier look when you let it dry and then you go in and you use a clear blender last. You use a clear blender first, you get a much softer, more um, pearl look, like a, like a pearl, you know. So there you have it. There are some ideas on how you can use your colorless blender the right way. I know this is probably what we all try when we first get our colorless blenders, but um, but using them as a bleach pen or a highlight pen, if you think of it like that, um, it's it'll make your life a lot easier with your coloring. Or if you think of them as a, if you think of it as a primer, so you're going to put that on first because you want things to blend. That's how you use a colorless blender. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below. I'll link everything I used, and um, I hope you give these techniques a try with your colorless blender. Oh, one more tip I want to share is actually using these with colored pencils. Now, when I'm going to use my colorless blender with colored pencils, I use a separate one. And um, I've just been using my Blick Studio colorless blender for pencils, so it doesn't matter what, what brand you have. Um, Prismacolor used to sell a colorless blender marker marketed to use with the colored pencils. And actually, I used that before I ever used... Um, before I used any markers at all. So I was very familiar with that technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by coloring a really light layer. Now this is um, a very smooth cardstock, so it's not really what I would typically use for colored pencils. I tend to use something that's got a little bit of grab to it, like a, uh, a drawing paper that's, you know, not super slick like this. But you could put your lighter color. I'm also going to do this over here too. Lightest color first. And take your time. I'm just doing this for example's sake. I'll show you how to do a sphere and how to just do a gradient. And then I'm going to do my medium color. Make sure my contours kind of go with the shape. And I mean, you don't want to press really hard and leave dark marks, but you don't have to be like super, super careful with this. It's the same technique as like using Gamzol, but you've got it in a convenient marker. And this is, um, you know, alcohol, not not uh, mineral spirits. But it's a solvent, it does about the same thing. So I'm going to do the same over here. And the more pencil you have on, the better it's going to work. Now the reason I don't like to use my uh, markers that I'm going to use, my blender that I'm going to use with markers together, is because um, it does dissolve the wax and you'll get wax in that marker clogged up in there eventually and you might need to replace the nib and I just wouldn't want to get a streak of or a smear of wax on my marker art and then have issues um, like layering colors together there. Alright, so I'm doing a very very crude blend here. This is riveting footage I'm sure and you could work back over if you feel like you don't have enough stuff in there because you really do want to make sure you have plenty of um, of pigment if you want a smooth look. 
If you want a textured look, then no, you don't need to do that. Just depends on what you're going for. Now, one other thing I'm going to add, just to soften and smooth things a little bit, is I'm going to grab a little bit of white. Oh, I'm going to scribble that off. I had some crud on that white, and it's it's on there now, but oh well. Now, you can blend with a white pencil. This is just going to help me control my, pink, my color up there at the top edge. I feel like maybe I want a little bit darker there. But your, your paper, your, your um, stamping paper, your smooth cardstock is only going to take so much of the pencil. Alright, so we've got them blended. I'm going to take my marker that I use for my colored pencil, and I'm going to do this one with a chisel edge. And um, I actually like to start dark to light, but you can do the light first if you think there's a really big jump there. But all you do is color over it. Now you can let this dry and apply more, but I would definitely let it dry first. You can see how it's kind of like getting really moved around with that chisel edge. Now to clean your marker when you're done, you scribble it. And it might stain the tip and there might be a little bit of residue left behind. That's why, again, I use a separate one. But it's pretty much going to um, going to clean itself there by scribbling it. Now you can also use the brush edge and you can do light to dark. Especially if you want to keep the light really light, you can do light to dark. And the brush is nice for round objects or things that have a little bit more of like an organic shape and you want to keep that, that shape. But that's another great way to use your colorless blender. Use it with colored pencils and just make sure you put enough down. And there you have it. So um, maybe you have a limited supply of markers, but you've got colored pencils. You can always layer your colored pencils on top and then go in and blend them again with a uh, clear blending marker. This is obviously alcohol-based markers, water-based clear blender markers are a little bit different. And if you're curious about that and want a video on how to use a water-based colorless blender marker, let me know in the comments below and I can do a video on that too. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go if you like videos like this. Until next time, happy crafting.